So Beyond Light is finally here. I have managed to get my hands on a wide number of new weapons, perks and ideas to bring to you. So one build that I have been eyeing up to do ever since it was first revealed was to do a No Time to Explain and Getaway Artist build. Now in one of Bungie's vidocs they did mention that with the No Time to Explain exotic trait being active and the Getaway Artist exotic trait being active, you can have both of them active at the same time for a dual mini arc soul setup with a brilliantly high DPS to also boot. Now it's a fantastic build for solo players who are going through anything from endgame or random in-game events and it also has a lot of benefits when being used by your teammates as well as you can triple your DPS if your teammates are also following the same loadout. So for example, a fire team of 3 warlocks with the same loadout can actually turn into a fire team of 9. Now imagine the amount of DPS you could pull out from that. So enough talking, let's break this baby down with all the things you need and what you need to be aware of and how you can make this build as epic as it is. For the subclass, we will be using the Atonement of Elements for precisely the Electrostatic Surge perk which extends our rifts and charges faster when we are surrounded by our own teammates. And then we have the Arc Soul perk as well that allows our rift to produce Arc Souls for others and ourselves to use. This subclass to the many is considered the weakest when it comes down to add control for most activities. As compared to the Atonement of Conduction, this subclass only real main strength is in its ability to spawn Arc Souls which is handy for team support or solo support. Its super is usable, but nothing too special. And its Rising Storm perk is also good as well, but nothing too thrilling either. But even though it has a lot of weak sides to it, its two main perks I mentioned for creating Arc Souls is generally all we need and this here will be more than enough for us to head into whatever content in mind. We will have the ability to freely produce Arc Souls on the go, it can also enhance our weapon DPS as well, and this is simply what makes the subclass good. It's not powerful like the others available, but its ease of use and strength within the Arc Souls is what makes the subclass viable for those that want to give a little more kick on their end for extra damage support. Now for your rifts, I would advise you to pick the healing rift so you can survive for longer and also help out those who need quick healing and also want a Arc Soul for themselves. And then for your grenades, the storm grenade is great for its aerial damage when you're not turning it into an arc soul. So next are the weapons and you're going to need the no time to explain pulse rifle to complete the look of the build and then a secondary of your choice with the demolitions perk to help. Heavy falls in the same category of whatever suits you best, I would say go with something that has reach and is great for boss damage, so grenade launchers or rocket launchers. With the no time to explain pulse rifle in my primary slot, I can do two things with it, I can build up my weapons as the perk, time slip and get my miniature turret portal to appear and provide extra DPS as I fire and on top of that, using the weapons exotic trait rewind again will give me back ammo every time I land a precision hit with it and it will also extend my time slip perk for longer. Now this is an exotic weapon that many of you will want to get your hands on just because of how fantastic the perks work with each other. The fact that the weapon is rewarding you upon precision hits with an extra DPS bump and practically unlimited ammo is definitely something that all players should heavily invest with getting, as I can see this being useful in raids for certain phases or in nightfalls when you want to keep distance but also put in the DPS. With the build now we can further enhance this with not one but two portable turrets that can cover all of our angles and this is probably the most funnest amount of time I've had with a build that can really just feel good to use. But anyways, the weapon perks are great and complement the overall feel of the build, its stats are also great and play within its strengths, and overall it plays really nice which is a big factor for whether the weapon is great to use or not. For our secondary, I'm using the Truth Teller grenade launcher with Demolitionist and Field Prep. As any weapon with Demolitionist is viable for what the build is going for, I've decided to pair my loadout with a weapon that can cover ground easily and can hit just as hard as if I have a shotgun but with range. As grenade launchers are great with dispersing areas quickly, I believe that using this as part of a crowd control setup would help when I need to break things up and control the fight in my favour. The demo perk will come in handy when I need to craft a grenade quickly, but at the same time using a sidearm could also be beneficial as it cuts out the need of aiming and also detonating a shot. I will also be using this to take on major and ultra enemies as I face when I don't have any heavy ammo spare and this does do some fair bit of damage against major type enemies which can be handy when I'm completely surrounded by powerful mobs. But like I said earlier, you're free to choose whatever secondary is best for you 
as long as it has the Demolitions perk built into it. For Heavy, I've chosen to use the Sub-Zero Salvo Rocket Launcher with Fresh and Quick Draw. Now, we all know Rocket Launchers aren't so great at the moment, but Bungie is fully aware of this and they plan on buffing it, just we don't know how and when they'll do this. Now, the Rocket Launcher I'm using is a new one from Beyond Light and has some new perks as well which could make it even more better to use, but I need to do a bit more testing my end first just to see. The role I have has the new perk called Fresh, where killing enemies with this weapon can produce a small amount of super energy bomb kills. And to, to be honest, I can't really see how much it provides, as I'm always using it against bosses or ultras, and that's really what rocket launchers are designed for, taking on big tough enemies. But I do have one that has the perk called Chain Reaction, where upon a kill, I can create elemental damage explosion, which can proc multiple times, and basically cover multiple areas. Now, I do switch between the two depending on the content, but just remember, any heavy is fine, just be sure it can pack a punch. For your stats, you're going to want to focus on just two areas, that being the grenade and recovery area, as these two are going to make you produce arc souls by the dozen. For your discipline, hitting the 60-70 to 70 ranges is the ideal sweet spot that everyone should aim for, as when combined with a weapon that has the demolition perk, there's no point of going any more higher than that. Also, by the time your arc sword that you produce via your getaway artists are done, you should be up and ready to use them again at the rate you're going at. Your recovery now should be at least 60 plus, so you can earn back your rift in a short amount of time. I would advise heavily sticking to around the 60 to 70 ranges as your perk, Electric Static Surge, should be able to fill in the rest. The rest of your stats should reflect upon what you consider is most important, with resilience and recovery being at the reasonable enough level for you to survive longer. If you have any stat points available, I would advise you to put some points into your strength stat, so you can also utilize the Rising Storm perk for some extra ability energy. For your armor, any season mod slots are fine to use, as you will only need the Charge with Light mods, and even then, you have free reign as to what you want in them. Your exotic armor pieces does not require a specific affinity, so you're free to pick and choose what you want. So with all that being covered, here are the mods that we are currently using. Head, we're using Recovery and Swift Charge mod. Arm, we're using Recovery and Momentum Transfer mod. Chest, we're using Discipline, Concussive Dampener and High Energy Fire mod. Leg, we're using Discipline, Grenade Launcher Scavenger, Insulation and Protective Light mod. Bond, we're using Discipline, Distribution, and the Bomber mod. This is a very fun and pretty simple build that all players, both new and old, can get their hands on, and generally just use straight away, with nothing super complicated being required. All you need to know to make the build work, is to simply make sure you have your Getaway Artist Arc Soul active, before starting an encounter, and then land 10 precision based hits on your target, to get your Time Slip perk active and then just go ham from there. And that's it. That's generally the build in its full. And you don't need to expand on aspect anymore, as the damage alone from the no time to explain will be enough for you to primarily solo bosses without the use of heavy, supers or secondary. And the option of creating a powerful or non-powerful arc soul is there for your choosing, thanks to the getaway artists and a tournament of elements in action. And this is what I really like about the build, it's simplicity. Compared to all the other builds done, this build here doesn't require the use of mods to make it produce a special effect or a certain synergy that is required to make the weapon work in your favour. All you need to do on your end is net some kills and activate your two traits, and everything else will fall in place, it's just that simple. If you're a casual player who wants to do end game content, but don't have a nifty build to use, then this build here honestly, will be the best thing to run until you find another build to play with, or until you find something that's more suitable for you. Of course, War Mind Cell builds will always be the random builds to use when you want to utterly wipe out an area, but for something more laid back, this build just hits the right notes. Another interesting thing about the build that you probably may have noticed, the mods being used are actually nothing special. I'm just using the standard charge with light and high energy fire mod for extra damage and this is because we don't need anything else. Now this may sound bad and slightly lazy, but this means you have free reigns in terms of choosing what type of mods you want to use 
as long as you can activate them. This now opens you up to a wide number of expansions to take this build further and to make it go ahead and fit your own playstyle. So while I do have the main basic to use for the current build, I can also switch out the mods for the use of Warmind Cells for example, or use other charge light mods for extra protection or extra damage. Like a build within a build. For PvP players, this also means you can utilize this build to your own playstyle as well, with the free option of mod choosing without the changing up too much of your overall loadout. Another thing to mention, you don't have to use the Getaway Artist Exotic either to make the build work. As long as you have the Bottom Tree subclass available, then you should be able to pull this off as well, although it would be highly wise to have it, so you don't keep stopping and moving, stopping and moving. Now, usually I would provide a downside of the build, but honestly there isn't one to provide this time round. The damage is good, it's flexible in terms of weapons and mods being used, and your subclass can be changed to another arc subclass, and you can still regain the bonuses it provides. I don't always provide a build where it doesn't have a downside to it, but this time round, this build here has really taken the cake, which is quite surprising. My overall final verdict on the build is that if you're after a super simple but really effective setup to carry you all the way through to end game and back, and also provide you with plenty of options to change it to how you want it to feel, then this build right here is definitely for you, and that right there is my humble and utter truth. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you all in the next one.